How you doing guys and gals? This is Doug Wilson from Yellow Hawk Custom Kydex and gear and knives. I'm still working on that, uh, what I'm going to say. <laughs> anyway, I'm out here in my little slice of heaven here in Pennsylvania and I got the brand new prototypes of the LMF1 and the BMF2 made by Mike Wallace at Wallace Edged Tools. Okay, these are both my designs. Um, and if you're at all regular on this channel, you know that these knives, previous to having them made here in the States by Mike, I was having them made by uh, a knife making company in Great Britain, okay? That got to be a real pain in the butt. They really put out some nice knives, but working over the pond like that, communications were sketchy. I didn't always get exactly what I wanted, so I'm done with that, okay? I think. I think I'm done with that. <laughs> I, I tell you, they really do make some nice knives over there, so I think I'm done with it as far as this is concerned, okay? So I'm having these knives made here in the States by an over-the-top knife builder, Mike Wallace, at Wallace Edge Tools, okay? So, you know, for their debut, all right, I got the prototypes now. I'm just going to put them to work building a fire. So if you stay tuned, we're going to get to it and build a fire with the LMF1 and the BMF2. We'll be right back. Okay, uh, we're back. Real quick, I want to mention something. I have a, a hobby. Uh, I like to scour the internet looking for good knife builders that aren't very well known who I believe build good knives. Okay, this is one of them. All right, I found this. Uh, where did I find this? I can't remember can't even remember the guy's name that made it okay it's a hell of a knife though it's uh, D2 tool steel all right it's got that nice belly it, it, I tell you it reminds me of that that uh, the Puma hunter the Puma knives hunter that one that's like 350 bucks or whatever it, it reminds me a lot of that knife walnut handles brass uh, uh, bolster brass pins this thing is really built well okay and basically what I want to say about this is I scour the internet looking for these guys I buy knives from them and then I put a nice sheath system on them and I sell them on my eBay listings okay so if you're looking for a decent knife that isn't gonna break the bank okay now honestly you got to trust me to know what a good knife is okay I think I got that in the bag you know um, been doing this a long time and you're looking for a nice knife that isn't going to break the bank with a nice sheath on it that you can use as a system one complements the other check out my eBay listings I usually have two or three on there at any one time okay all right that's all I want to say about that nice knife I tell you this guy does a good job okay no must no fuss Okay, not real fancy, but built very well. Okay, fit and finish is pretty damn good. Okay, not perfect. I mean, it's not a Bark River. It's not an LT Wright. It's not definitely not a Mike Wallace or a Pete Kohler, but it's a nice knife. I would use it. I have used knives like this. Okay. Anyway, just wanted to show it to you. I'll put it over here. Okay, now. We're gonna build a fire with the LMF1 and the BMF2, okay? Basically what I got in front of me here is a piece of white birch, okay? This is the bark from a white birch tree, okay? The bark of the white birch tree is great 
for tinder okay and basically what you do is you scuff up the top layer into you know some fluffy little pieces all right scuff it up get some dust and some pieces of bark cut off of there with your knife by scraping it okay some people slice it off but sometimes I like to scrape it like this because it really goes up well with a ferro rod okay all right and you just you just work your way around the bark until you got a decent pile of dusty flaky birch bark okay and you save all the pieces okay the LMF one is a CPM 3V steel small to medium sized bushcrafter G10 scales pass through compression pins these happen to be copper he's also got brass um, I believe he offers steel as well this is his bone textured handles it kind of looks like bone now I chose these handle scales for these knives but he's got like 30 other options of handle scales colors and stuff like that different finishes I like this finish because it it, it offers tremendous purchase I mean it really gives you a good grip if this knife is wet or your hands are wet or bloody or whatever okay very comfortable knives in the hand Mike Wallace is very very good at what he does okay so I like to work with guys like that okay this one is 530 seconds uh, stock you see that it's got a modified saber grind which is one of my favorite grinds for a bushcrafter okay I like Scandies they're good I like them but I generally like a skin uh, saber grind a little bit more than a Scandy okay you can do more with it in my opinion okay drop point blade all right Got a nice little sharpening choil there and the BMF2 is a little bigger than the LMF1 this is an old French trapper design now like I said on the intro video of these knives um, further versions future versions of this knife the G10 is going to come all the way up into the Ricasso okay so this whole area right here is going to be filled with G10 okay all the way down to the tip of the Ricasso just behind the sharpening choil there okay all right so fluffing up my my birch bark all right and when you do this it lights up pretty well with a ferro rod okay now, I just want to show you this. I'm probably going to build the fire a different way, but let me see if I can get a ferro rod here. I got the Delta Whiskey Backcountry here, and I'm going to pull the ferro rod off the sheath and use it to light up this birch bark. All right, I'll tell you, it doesn't take long. See that? Okay, that'll burn for a little bit. All right, it'll eventually take up the whole piece of birch bark. I got another piece I'm going to start the fire with. Okay, and you got time to get your other pieces of tinder and kindling on top of it. Okay, throw this on the ground, stomp it out. Okay, that black smoke is the oils that are in the bark, okay? Um, extremely pyrophoric oils, they light up real quick and they burn real hot, so it gives you some time to build that fire, okay? Uh, this is just one way to build a fire, okay? I'm going to now 
take the BMF2 and do a little bit of batoning and get some decent pieces of wood for this fire. Okay? Uh, as soon as I can find my baton. <laughs> what the hell? I just had it. Here it is. Okay. I tell you, I'm getting old, guys. I am really getting old. Gonna throw them over here. Okay, these saber grinds do pretty well at batoning. I usually don't have a problem with them. Tell you, Mike really did a good job on these knives. I am thoroughly impressed at his abilities. sit down Woo. I like the way that birch splits most of the time it's it's definitely not hard to do not hard to split birch usually uh, unless it's wet sometimes when it's wet it can be a little difficult this is well seasoned real dry Splits real well. Just want some smaller pieces that I can add for my main fuel. This isn't going to be a big fire. All right, now I'm going to use a smaller knife for this one. This is the LMF one. Ooh. That was nice. It's like hitting spring steel. Let's see if I can get one more split out of this. I guess not. All right. I know you don't want to sit here and look, watch me split wood for the next half hour. Okay, there's that. All right, the LMF1, the BMF2. Light multi-function, basic multi-function. This one is designed after the Raymere's wood lure knife. Only, I think this knife is better, okay? And this is designed after an old French trapper knife. Um, now, I, I tell you, I don't know anybody who's been doing this a long time who didn't have a French trapper knife when they were a kid or a teenager. I had one back then they were made real thin they were replicas um, they were usually like an eighth inch stock not real strong the steels were comparable to 1095 but not like the steels we have today especially not like CPM 3V okay so a few of us have redesigned those knives that we had when we were kids that were real popular back in the frontier days um, and we made them better you know so there it is okay um, let me show you what we got for the fire lay here okay building a fire is 90 percent preparation okay here's all my wood 
All right, all the way on the right is the real small stuff. Over toward the left, it just starts getting bigger and bigger. Okay, and then I got some bigger stuff over here. Like I said, this isn't going to be a huge fire. Then I got some cedar bark over there. Okay. I'm going to take some cedar bark. I'm going to process it down. Okay. Now this is... Hold on for a sec. Let me grab a piece. All right, this is what cedar bark looks like on the tree, okay? Now this is red cedar bark. White cedar bark is different, okay? This is that stringy stuff, okay? You're looking for the outer stringy stuff or what I like to go for is the inner stringy stuff, the cambium layer, okay? So that's what it looks like on the outside of the tree. And I go for the stuff on the inside of it, okay? All this stringy stuff, see it? Okay, and that's what I have in my hands here. Okay, so I'm going to turn the, the camera off. I'm going to process this, and then we'll be right back. Okay, so I'm going to do something a little different than you see most often when somebody's building a fire on YouTube um, in a primitive fashion. I'm going to use what we call a fire piston, okay? Fire pistons are fairly controversial in the bushcrafting community. However, if you get a decent one, they work pretty well. Okay? I'm going to show you this one. Alright? This is the piston part of the fire piston. Okay? You want to make sure that you don't get... Now, you have to grease this O-ring. Some of them use natural materials to produce the seal. This one is man-made material so it's got a a uh, an o-ring on the end of it okay all right in this pouch i keep a little plastic bag with char cloth and grease this is actually lard okay with an extra o-ring stuck in the corner there just in case I need it okay uh, what I usually do is I usually grease the o-ring first before I put it into the sleeve okay but it's already greased now so it should work for us okay yeah that's a leather pouch <laughs> okay so here's the brass tube that the piston fits in, okay? Basically, it fits in there like that. And the way you use it is, you put a piece of char cloth on the end of the piston. There's a little cup there. Put a piece of char cloth in there. Put it in the piston, okay, in the sleeve. And you smack it really hard. Now... Be careful, you can hurt yourself. I almost broke my thumb on these once, uh, one of these once, okay? You have to be careful, because you gotta really hit it hard, okay? So, like I said, make sure you keep the end of that thing clean. I'm gonna pick, take a piece of char cloth out of this bag, okay? Now, what you wanna do is, you wanna take an extra piece of char cloth and put it inside your bird nest. So that when you light that tinder, I mean light that ember, when that ember gets going, you got some more char cloth to extend that ember because that little piece probably isn't going to do you very well, okay? It doesn't stay burning for long, okay? So now I'm going to take another piece of char cloth, I'm going to put it on the end here, Now you make sure it doesn't interfere with the o-ring okay and like I said with pistons you just got to find one that works okay they do work I'm gonna show you and you got to make sure 
that this thing is in there so it doesn't pop out on you okay all right so let's see if we can get this thing to ignite all right all right that didn't work that didn't work that didn't work That's what it was. Okay, you can see the embers lit. Okay. All right. Now, you want a piece of stick so you can pop that ember out of there. Get it into your bird nest so you can blow it into flame. Doesn't take long. All right. I'm gonna pop this down here. All right. I'm gonna get my sticks. My really dry sticks. I'm gonna make sure. Now this this cedar bundle is a little bit damp. Okay. I'm gonna give it a little more. All right. Fluff it up a little bit more. All right. And I'm probably going to have to blow on this to get it to go. Probably going to light pretty well. that's going to be a big problem to keep it lit <laughs> okay so the fire's going pretty good let me check it out all right So let's talk about the fire piston a little bit more, okay? I got a bad memory. I don't know who made this. I bought it off of eBay about three years ago, okay? It's been in that bag for three years. I use it every so often, okay? The O-ring is still good. As you can see, this is the first O-ring I've had in this thing. And, uh, and it works pretty good if you practice with it you got to get the feel for a fire piston okay they are reliable ways of creating fire okay they are but you have to get one that works and you got to practice with it bushcrafting skills are like anything else that you're going to depend on you have to do it consistently in order to be good at it okay I've been doing this since I was 10 years old, out in the bush, messing around, camping, bushcrafting, wilderness backpacking. I spend a lot of time in the bush, okay? 
And practicing is what it's all about. You gotta practice these skills in order to own them, okay? So that's the fire piston. Fire piston is an ancient form of making fire, okay? Probably thousands of years old. They used to be made out of wood and natural materials, but now, you know, with technology, we're able to make them with man-made materials and they work better, <clears throat> generally, okay? Um, you know, that took me, honestly, my IT guy is gonna edit some of those piston smacks out of there, but <clears throat> it took me about seven or eight tries to get the ember, okay? And that's what it's gonna take with a piston if you haven't practiced for a while. It's gotta be a perfect plunge, okay? And that O-ring cannot let any air around it, so you gotta grease it, okay? If you have one with an O-ring, okay? So I'm gonna put this thing back. Um, the next fire I'm, I'm probably gonna build with the birch bark again, all right? All right, so another way of starting a fire, as long as you got, as long as you have everything prepared beforehand, like I said, Building a sustainable fire is all about preparation, 90% preparation. If you spend a half an hour, 45 minutes prepping everything, your wood, your tinder, your kindling, everything, your fire lay, then you're gonna be successful no matter what method you use as long as you practice your skills, okay? Here's another way, fat wood, okay? Everybody knows what fat wood is. Okay? If you don't know what fat wood is, there's a lot of YouTube videos on fat wood itself. Okay? So I'm going to process some of this. This is my favorite way to process fat wood. But you have to have a sharp 90 degree spine on your knife. The LMF1 and the BMF2 both have sharp 90 degree spines. Okay? So basically what I do is I scrape it into a powder, okay? Scrape it into a powder. I already have a bunch of it. All right, I've already got a bunch of the powder on here, okay? So I just made a little bit more. All you got to do is take a ferro rod with your 90 degree spine, okay? Now, I'm going to say another thing about ferro rods. This is one of those quality ferro rods. The actual rod itself comes from firesteels.com. In my opinion, that's the finest source of ferro rods on the market today, okay, that I know of. Their composition is such that you get hotter sparks and more of them, okay? So it's a softer ferro rod from firesteels.com, okay? So let's see what we can do here. All right, doesn't take much. This pile of fat wood is going to stay burning for quite a while, okay? And it'll take the birch bark that's under it with it, okay? That black smoke is the oils that I really don't want to be breathing, <laughs> okay? All right, so there's another way of starting that fire. 